fantastic. So, it's been a year. Time flies, they tell me, when I'm enjoying myself. And I've certainly enjoyed myself. And it doesn't seem like a year since you were kind enough to uh, give me the great honour of being president of this society. And in fact, if I'm being pedantic, it's only been 50 weeks and 15 hours. So maybe, Pierre, you're not having the ball just yet. <laughs> but it is time to thank my board, who did not always look so bored as this. And I don't think this is a reflection of the inner divisions between Europe. And in fact, most of the time, the board, I am deeply grateful for their help, their support, and their encouragement as we try together to take EPOS through to a more stable platform and so that we're ready to take off for the next section of EPOS's career. It's been great fun and I again thank all members of the board for their unfailing uh, work for the EPOS Society. It has been a great year. I've lost a few friends but I've made even more and those who aren't with me today in person are certainly with me in spirit. I have to thank my colleagues and my family for putting up with my absence, either mental or physical, and for making the work happen smoothly in my absence, and to them I am too entirely grateful. But of course this is not about me, it's about Pierre. I have to introduce, you to the, introduce him to the society, but you know him well already. He is the consummate colleague. We have all come across Pierre in one way or another in one of his many roles. He has been an undoubted help and a great colleague on the EPOS board and a superb uh, sort of vice president and president elect and I'm most grateful for his support throughout this year. He's also of course a father of three and a grandfather of three and a proud man as well as he walked his daughter down the aisle. And his first granddaughter, the grandson, was, was born, I remember, during an EPOS board meeting. I can also remember, but I'm digressing again, that it was a time when England were beating France at the Rugby World Cup. But that's, of course, irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. But as he walked his daughter down the aisle, and as Francoise and Pierre looked on, it can only have seemed yesterday when they were all a lot smaller and life was perhaps more simple. So, Caroline, Antoine and Marie the proud uh, uh, children of this family. Pierre himself grew up in a medical family in Nancy, an area of France that has formed him in many ways. His holiday time was spent in Dieppe, where he and his sister and parents were involved in sailing, and he tells me there were regular trips across that little channel to Ireland and hopefully back again. It made him a man of action, on the high seas, on the high hills. And his place in San Jose, which I was lucky enough to visit recently, has the mountains out looking out of the window. A keen skier, and thankfully he didn't take us down some of the slopes that he was in, uh, taking, taking. Pierre and Francoise met at medical school during those hippie happy days that we heard the music of not so long ago. In 1982 they married and soon after that went off to Montreal. Pierre to learn about spine surgery, Francoise to learn about internal medicine. They returned to Nancy to work as an anatomist and as a surgeon and his career kept him there for many years. His mentors, Professor Maurice Behain, Jean Prevot and Jean Dubasset, are an important part of his career and of his uh, the man he is today. He is, of course, a man of precision and detail, as you might expect from an orthopaedic surgeon and an anatomist. His attention to detail in his lectures, in his teachings, in his writings, and in this sort of Bible, if you like, of trauma care, flexibly, interdolary, nailing in children. He is also a man with an incredible memory. I wouldn't say he's like an elephant in any other way, but his attention to detail, his memory of all things EPOS, and his knowledge of the statutes of our society is beyond uh, grasp. And if we hadn't had him on the EPOS board, who knows what disasters might have befallen us. He is also the consummate European, not simply because he's represented your society on the board 
a secretary and on the board and vice president elect and all those sorts of jobs. He is a European. He has now moved from Nancy, and it was Andre Kalin and Gerard Bellini who perhaps influenced his decision to take on another step in his career. And here he finds himself now in Geneva, representing again all that is different about Europe, the fact that we can change our cultures and our identities whilst we develop and grow. He is, as I said before, a fantastic teacher, softly spoken, to the point, great clarity in everything that he says. And teaching has been a very large part of his life, both in anatomy and in surgery. But I have also been taught by young EPOS that you can do things on the internet that I didn't think you could. So, of course, when I'm researching this at some ungodly hour of the morning, I come across something on YouTube. I'm not, of course, clever enough to download it and play it for you. But for Pierre, who's normally so in control of the teaching audience that he is addressing, there was one occasion where the students took to the desk, dancing to We Will Rock You, with Pierre looking on in bemusement. So I encourage you to do a little bit of internet research sometime this weekend and watch for yourself the amazing video. It wasn't Pierre on the table dancing, that was the only disappointment. <laughs> he is, of course, therefore a mover and a shaker, and the presidential line has been blessed by two great dancers of the last three. Me is not, I am not the dancer, but Maharam and Pierre are the movers and the shakers. Pierre is also one of the three Peters, Pierre Waters, Pierre Newton, and Pierre Lascon, who are guiding us towards our first combined meeting in 2017. So really, Pierre is multi-talented, a multitasker. He can do anything at any time, and we owe him much. And I have had the honor of working with him, and it has been a true privilege. So let me introduce you, finally, to the Pierre who is going to be your 22nd EPOS president, Professor Pierre Lascon. <laughs> start with them and thank you Deborah, I will thank my family <coughs> again. They have supported me so much being able to be, to be here today before you. My mother, a midwife, my father, a pediatrician, they are both still alive. My wife Françoise, not only because you are a medical doctor, of course. And my three children, you saw them, Caroline, Antoine and Mary, and my three grandchildren, Alban, Paul in 207, maybe St. Joseph. I would like to thank also my, my mentors, and I'm sorry to limit uh, my list to some of them. Jean Prévost in Nancy, who led me a total freedom leading to some possibility of innovation. Maurice Duhem in Montreal, who probably gave me a sense of uh, diplomacy, if any. I am. How did you say? For many things, and at least his enthusiasm. All the members of the French Pediatric Orthopedic Society. I learned my craft. I learned a lot of respect for my patients. <coughs> Klaus Parch, you supported my EPOS candidature, my career, and you are always a defender of the easing technique. Gérard Bolini. You pushed me to become the General Secretary of EPOS between uh, 2006 and 2011. André Kivin, <coughs> you have created in Geneva the excellent condition of my new life in Geneva, including nice and very active partner, partners in our department. 
Just a few words of my career, which is really simple. <coughs> Medical studies in Nancy, in France. Fellowship in Montreal. Back to Nancy. Lucky to work with Jean-Paul Metezo and Jean-Noël Ligier. So, Professor of Anatomy in 1990, Chief of the Department of Pediatric Orthopedics in 1994. And after 18 years, <coughs> I had to change, and I was very lucky to get the opportunity to move to Geneva. That was exactly two years ago. I'm a HEPOS member since uh, 1991, and so I'm very proud standing at this podium with you today. You know how much I love EPOS. And be sure I will continue to do my best for you, for the trainees in pediatric orthopedics and for the children in the world. Deborah has completed the growth spur of EPOS. We said that yesterday. And thus, your 22nd president is the president of a young, adult, but totally mature society. You must appreciate the changes of our society during these last years and the enormous production of the recent past presidents. Development of education, change of the bylaws, creation of the nomination committee and the EPOS Foundation, creation of the Slauti Travelling Fellowship added to the Postnaman, contract with our PCO and central office, and among other scientific reading, international communication, including the website. Perhaps too many activities, but not only we can, but we can do more. Today, finances of EPOS are healthy, thanks to Deborah, thanks to Thomas. So we are working on a good basis. And first of all, I will consolidate our activities and we will do it without any discussion, mainly regarding our office and PCO, as well as the GCO with a deadline to get an impact factor. You know me, I like transparency and right things. If something has to be decided by EPOS <coughs> and for EPOS, it should be done. On concomitantly to this consolidation, I would like to develop with you some major goals. First, improve our relationship with the national, continue to improve our relationships with the national pediatric orthopedic societies. One purpose of them is education of their young fellow. So collaboration with EPOS is an opportunity and among proposal, a national society session will hold during the next Marseille meeting with a poster presentation of the best papers selected by each national society. Humanitarian activities. Many of you conduct such activities all over the world. And this is of great value for our society, too often secret and unknown. If you agree, you may reply to the survey we will send promptly to all of you. The goal will be collecting information about your missions, drawing a world map of EPOS member missions, and building a network. Probably your dream will be realized. The next year in Marseille, the combined session EPOS with IFPOS will be dedicated to humanitarian activities. Third, we will reactivate the historian committee of IPOS. History of a society is definitely necessary to keep the memory. Four, no six. Four, on the other edge, the why IPOS is emerging. The young EPOS. It is a bold mission to help them via the website to community committee, sorry, via dedicated scientific activities. Of course, they don't need us for drinking beers. But well, we will offer them two sessions in Marseille, one for a free discussion with a dinosaur of EPOS, like it was organized with Tony Cashwell, with a big success. And also a session meet the experts with a case discussion. Five. Yesterday, you have elected our vice president, second vice president of EPOS. He will be the president of the first EPOS POSNA, EPOSNA meeting in Barcelona 2017. As you know, Manuel Cassiano Neves is the current president of EFORT, and his election is clearly a message to EPOS. 
So we will clarify our relationship with this effort. On one hand, we will maintain our total independence from our annual meetings. On the other hand, we may perhaps progress to different type of organization due to some effort links or not. We will decide next year. Finally, we need to accept bottom-up feedback and criticism of our management. A tax force has to be created helping us to improve the quality of what we do and what we want to do from the quality of the scientific sessions to the social programs. We should answer the question, why am I a NEPOS member? What is my interest to become a NEPOS member? And one example of this feedback we should have. For instance, I don't consider normal that runners of the charity run this morning have to pay and to run. It should be opposite. You pay if you don't run. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> to achieve this scientific goal, I'm pleased working with a very dynamic board committee. All members of the board, all chairmen of committees and their members are really hard workers full of enthusiasm and plenty of respect for their job. And at the board, be sure that all the councillors will get the future specific responsibilities. Deborah, you did an excellent job. You were the first to clean the society. The member who paid, you know. As did the prestigious former president of EPOS. And again, I'm very proud that my name is added to this list. As I mentioned before, you have achieved the growth spirit. Please to all of you that I will not achieve the next year down to a degenerative step. I want to thank all of you for your strong support. Thank you very much. Long life to EPOS. I know that it's really difficult to go back to London these days, but anyway, for the photo for the future, and you saw the picture of the scene, it's very splendid, so at least, thank you.